back to my channel. Now today I want to do a watercolour background. Now this is my second attempt on a different page. I did do, was it in this book? It wasn't in this book but you'll see it in my finished pages, my February finished pages. Uh, it was a Hannah Lynn page and I was not happy at all. I'm not happy with it at all. I've kept that video private. I mean if a couple of people ask then I will upload it but I want to redo it today. I'm doing the white, why do I always want to call these white? What are they call White nights. White night paints. Now they're quite affordable these. They're not as cheap as the um, Winsor & Newton Cotman ones that I really like. But I fancied using these today. So I'll pick out a couple of brushes. Whether I use all these, I don't know. I just like having different uh, sizes to choose from. So we've got a small, a medium, a large. So I pre-wet these colours, but I'll have to re-wet them again. Uh, I'm hoping that the sound quality is a little bit better now. I have upgraded the microphone on my camera. So I'm hoping that, you know, it'll pick up a little bit better and not have such muffled backgrounds. Now, I've already based this with alcohol markers. So if I turn the page over, you'll be able to see. All based. I did purposely leave this bit out because I want to use some sort of uh, glitter embellishment or shiny embellishment there um, and then if I leave it white it will stand out more I think so I'm going to play it safe with these areas at the top and use a smaller brush I'll pick out an even smaller brush just in case I just realised this one's got glitter all over it I think I'll use the small one to be safe to be safe so I've mixed my colour now normally I just go straight into the pan and then onto the paper so I think I'm just going to do that and just do what I usually do I'm pouring some clean water just into one of the wells of my palette that came with the, this palette I'm just loading my brush up I've just realised there's white in there and that's why I didn't notice so I'll try that again with clean water and I'll do the top section first and hopefully you can see it all this time <laughs> I don't want to make that mistake again. I really don't. So I've still got a bit of white mixed in with it, but it'll be fine. You might struggle as well seeing where you place the water. The trick that I've found is just moving it ever so slightly. And then you can see where it's shiner. But I'll just do what I did on the other pages that I got, got requested to do. In particular, that other Hannah Lynn page that did actually turn out nice, the tiger one. This is the same technique that I used. Um, so wet in the paper. So before it's got a chance to dry, let's pick some paint up and just pop that in the areas that I've already put that clean water down. And then you're doing the wet on wet technique here. So I can pop it down now because I know that there's water there. And you just want to spread that colour out. You'll notice that I'm not going to be keeping dipping it into the palette. I mean, you could use masking fluid for this bit, but I'm being a bit lazy. I'm not being a bit lazy, I'm being very lazy. <laughs> but you could use masking fluid if you want to protect your actual illustration. I'm just lifting it up again just so I can see where I've put that water. I just want a very thin layer of this and then when it's getting to the edges I'm cleaning my brush off and adding more clean water and dragging it across and I've just got a blob of water there which I don't want so I can pick that up with just a cloth more clean water pull it down and then into the paint again just like this you have to be a bit patient with this one I think especially I've picked a really detailed one out haven't I you know of all these areas which in hindsight I probably shouldn't so I want a bit of purple here and there I'm just dabbing it onto the paper just dabbing it on and letting it do its thing but now I'm going to pull some of the colour up, not where the paper is wet. Just randomly. 
and then a couple of water splatters as well so it's in my um, palette add some water and it's not coming off it's not coming off maybe I need more water on my brush so let's try that again there we go so I was tapping it on my finger I mean if you really don't want to get it on the illustration cover it up at this point so I just want to block colour these areas because these would all be painted and then I'll pop a little bit of purple into them as well when I finish the pink but I thought the pink would go nicely with the teal and I think it will do, I really do so I've been careful of the edges as best as you can anyway a little bit missed there, let's do this side let's add a little bit more paint and then there's this little bit in between that we need to fill in so same brush, I'm not wiping it off, I'm going in with the purple and just adding it into random places and then it's the same thing all the way around to be honest so wetting the area first with clean water now this has got a bit of a tinge to it already popping on your paint I do know I've gone over these little areas here but they're so tiny let's start pulling that out a little bit it's just sort of, it's, it's like an organised mess sort of thing and I want a little bit of purple just in areas I swear I always forget to put my phone on silent always right, to change it up a little bit on this side I mean the water started to tint now with the pink colour but I don't mind that I don't mind that at all let's just pre-wet all of this area and then we'll go in with a slightly darker pink mixed in with the original pink that we was using just a little bit more Let's see if I can dab that off, there we go so you see it's starting to pool there now so start moving the water around otherwise you'll have the same issue that I had with it divoting so I've pressed down the paper and just move that paint around don't let it have enough time to dry like that otherwise you'll have the same issues as me so more of the pink purple pulling it out should be very very loose with it let's get into these little areas and here let's try and move some of this around a little bit more some purple again I was being very shy with my brush then apparently and then these very edges let's use a bigger brush this time let's wet that and wet the edges and start pulling it out just like that we're getting there slowly but surely I think I want to pull it up a little bit further here on this side just a little bit so we'll pull that water up and add some more paint in them areas 
Right, I will use the heat gun for this video, obviously, just for the purpose of the video, just so it makes it a little bit quicker for me. Showing you how I do it. Just water at this point, but it is tinted the water. I'm working in sections as well to give myself plenty of time. A little bit more of that purple. Pink rather. And the purple this time. I want a little bit more on this side. So let's pull it across. Let's mix some of this in the palette and add plenty of water so I can get some of these splatters that I'm after. That should do for now. Clean water. Clean-ish water. I can move you up a little bit now, can't I? I mean there's no specific way of doing this I mean this will probably turn out so much different than the other ones that I've done but that's just the way of the technique I, I mean I think you'd really struggle getting two pictures looking identical doing this I really do so more of that my dog is snoring first time I used my microphone and I bet you that's picking it up <laughs> Saute all this area. Uh, some purple again. <laughs> Daft dog. Daft dog. See how I'm just pulling it out and then just wiggling the brush. And then just move the paint round where you want it to go. So the exact same process on the other side. I'm not worrying too much about the small leaves. Because once this is completely dry, you can get away with going over the top with colour pencil. So it's not too bad if you make a bit of a boo-boo. Let's add this pink now. in this area let's blend this out and let's add some purple to that it is really really easy I mean I don't even know what I'm going to call this video, like splatter effects, it's not technically <laughs> splatter effects is it? It's just an easy watercolour background in my opinion. Some more of the pink. Very vibrant down here, I didn't blend that out enough. But not to worry. Keep going with it, move the paint around, don't let it sit too long if you don't like where you put it. Because once it's dry, even though you can reactivate it, watercolour in my opinion, it stains the paper. Especially if you're using um, not paper that isn't watercolour paper. Which these definitely, definitely aren't. A little bit more purple. There's one last thing that I want to show you. Before it all dries, I'm going to put a couple of um, drops of clean water in random areas. Now let's see if I can get this very big bit at the bottom on the frame. It's not too much. Just randomly placing the colour and then just adding water. I'm 
and then I want some more purple. Clean brush. Right, a couple more splatter effects I think I want. So to protect, I've got just some like scrap paper here and I'll just hold it in the areas that I don't want it to go in I think. But it's going to be difficult because I'm going to have to hold it and I need two hands so yeah I didn't think that through. So maybe just holding it like that. And I don't really want it going on her face so I'll pop it there like that. So I'll, I'll let this dry, I will use the heat gun a little bit on it, um, but I'll more or less let it dry on its own because I don't want too many crinkles on the paper. And I did just manage to get some of the skin then. Ooh, the last one, the last one. So yeah, I will be back probably in about 15, well 15, 20 minutes my time. I forgot to show you the water splats, didn't I? The clean water splats. So let me show you in an area up here and I'll zoom in a little bit so I'll just get some clean water and then put it in the areas that are nearly dry and then when that dries it, it creates a really cool effect so let's move up and do some here now I've just managed to get a little bit on a nose it's always at the end it's always at the end without fail so that should be all right little bit at the bottom right now <laughs> now let it dry so there we go that's mostly dry there's a couple of splodges here that aren't dry but I don't want to overdo it with the heat gun and then cause, cause the page to crinkle any more than it already is because this isn't watercolour paper but it takes it quite well but if I just be very very careful I should have showed you this at the start of the video but I didn't even think that is the effect that I was going for with the splatters and you know the mixed colours and that's the effect that I achieved today with just doing that technique. I just think that it's so so simple and yet so effective. The only thing you've just got to be careful of, I try and keep the lines like sort of blurred out. I mean here you can see I've not blurred them out very well. Over here I've done them perfectly and I'm still learning this myself and I think each colouring book the paper acts differently. So it just depends on the book because uh, like I said I've had messages saying well what would it be like in this book and I've not tested this technique in he every single uh, colouring book out there I've only recently started it but I did do it in Hannah Carl's on one and that's been the best one so far um, the Amazon printed one was okay it was okay but my favourite is the, the colour in heaven but I will try it in a couple of other other papers oh I have tried it on Tantone paper I don't like it on that paper but that paper doesn't like water so it's just one of them things and I've just realised I've just got purple everywhere all over her face so <laughs> I'm going to have to attempt to fix that now so I'll end the video here I hope that you enjoyed and you found this helpful and I will see you in the next video bye